This is a tutorial on how to export a model into an Objective-C class that you can then import or use in say a, an iPhone app or an iPad app. So here I'm using Blender 2.63 so try and download that specific version so that you can follow the tutorial. Now the process is pretty much the same for all models so I'm just going to demonstrate it with this um, this cube model. Now what we want to do is we want to modify the user preferences and we want to save the user preferences um, because like here I'm using this model if it's in this state here if I was to do a save user preferences the next time I load Blender it'll be in this state and we want to avoid that. We want it to we want Blender to load in the default state. So what we need to do is we need to load factory settings and then from there we need to go into user preferences and add-ons. Now I've already got an import script for Objective C. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that. Okay. Now the settings will be in the state um, that you should have. So if we go user preferences and we go install add-on and here I'm going to go to my D drive and I've got a Objective-C header exporter and we just we can see it's appeared and then we just add it there by ticking that you can see some detail but that's not really important and then we go save as default now from now on if we close Blender and open Blender our export will be available and we can just check that by going export and Objective-C header cool so from here um, what we need to do is we need to split the screen so we go split area and we're going to, because we need some UV coordinates so we're going to change this to UV image editor let's squish this up and we're going to open another editor and we're going to go, go to text editor because I'm going to demo part of the Python script. So from here our model it's got it's got vertices, edges and faces but it doesn't have any UV coordinates and UV coordinates are used to map textures or graphics onto your model. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to go click in the editor with our model, press tab and we're going to go mesh faces and triangulate faces. What that does is it breaks the model up into triangles, it just makes it easier to render in a in an iPhone app or an an iPad app. It depends. You may want to render in quads, in which case you wouldn't do that, but I prefer triangles. So there we go. I have broken my model up into triangles and from here I'm going to unwrap it into UV coordinates onto uh, this editor which represents the image that um, is going to wrap the, the model. So from here we just go unwrap smart UV project um, yeah just use the defaults. So from here you can imagine if we had a graphic and this is the representation of the unwrapping we can sort of see how a picture or a JPEG or a PNG would be wrapped onto our cube. That's not important at this stage we're really only after some coordinates and because they're the coordinates are what are going to be imported into our or well, exported into our class file and imported into our iPhone app. So from here we've got our UV points um, we go back into our model, press tab to get out of edit mode there is 
a line or a couple of lines in the script where if you accidentally leave it in edit mode it will change the editor into object mode so you, um, but yeah um, while we're in edit mode like that for some reason the UV coordinates aren't available when we go through the there's like an inter internal DOM that the script passes you won't get any UV coordinates you need to be in you press tab make sure you're in object mode don't worry so much I added a line in the script and it will do it for you so from here we go export objective C let's go to D drive and we'll just call it cube test H and export now from here if we go and we have a look go to our D drive there's a cube test add it with Vim and this is our script here I'll just zoom in a bit and from here we can see all of our chords so basically it's just created a partial class so here we've got the it gets the name of the model and that's what it calls the class you can change that later once you import it into your into Xcode and here we have all of our coordinates so we've got vertices normals and texture coordinates and we've got our number of vertices as well so let's get out of that go back now what we can do is we can open our script I've got a copy of it here Add it with Vim there's a lot of there's bits and pieces that basically when you import the script it hooks into the IDE so that you have access, access to the script as an, a formal export in the menu I'll just go back it's basically doing this it's adding itself as a formal export I'm not going to go into that detail if you want to do the research you can do that yourself but the main part of the script is just this part here where it opens the file let's zoom in a bit where here it just opens the file it does a check to make sure you've got blender 2.62 or more or higher because this script the the internal DOM it changes pre well it changes at 2.62 and this technique of looping through fate polygons and loops um, and we've even got UV coordinates the structure is totally different in pre 262 so there's just a little check there we get our object by name so um, it'll do a check to see which object is active gets the name and then gets the actual um, the object or the mesh goes through first of all it does a count it counts all the vertices that are part of that model and then it starts writing the the implementation file so it, it writes the hash define a macro for the number of um, vertices found and then it starts building this static structure and then it just loops through all of the vertices normals and the texture coordinates and then it closes the file and we can I mean we can demo this let's just we'll copy it oh, let's zoom out and we'll copy this Control copy just to show you how easy it is oh, with Python you need to get rid of these indents so we'll just clean this up a little and it calls a function write string so we need to define that so we just copy that and just put it anywhere up the top it doesn't matter oh yeah and there's this file path as well so we'll just define that file path equals d colon high dot h and oh yeah we need to 
define BPY, we need that import. So if we go import BPY, just like that, it's pretty easy. BPY, cool. Um, I'll just zoom in a bit. We should be able to run that. So if we go pull that back and run, yep. Um, I'll just make sure that that file was created. Yep. Oh no, that's not it. What do we call it? Hide H. Edit with Vim. There we go. Cool. So without having to bring you up to speed with how exports hook into Blender, um, I can just show you just the, the bare bones. So in theory, you should be able to just paste this little script into your editor and you'll be able to export to whatever class name you want. Just put in your class name up there. And I'll just zoom in a bit. And you can have a look. Or you can contact me and I'll, I'll send it. Well, we're spinning around all over the place. So yeah, that's it there. You just import. It's just a bunch of write strings. It's really easy. So you write to a file. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with C and C++, but you just have format, sp format specifiers. Sp percent %d is just a number. Percent %s is a string. Python's a bit different to C and C++. You've got to use these percents to separate between the format and the actual value. And looping's a bit different, but um, yeah. If you know Python well, um, it's quite easy. If not, maybe have a look at Python and just come up to speed with Python. But yeah, um, that's about it.